Hello everyone and welcome to Genius Yoshi. Today we play our first games of Lorcana. And the first deck that we built is a deck based around Stitch Rockstar. One of the most powerful cards that I've seen so far from the spoilers of Lorcana. What Stitch does is that it allows you to draw a card every time you play a one or two costed character. As long as you exert it when you play it. And there is no limit on how often you can do that during a turn. So turn 6 Stitch, uncontested, is going to I'd hopefully dominate the board presence with a flurry of 1-drops. What, what makes it even stronger is his baby form, Stitch. Since this is a 1-drop and our Stitch here as Shift 4, if you have the small, the small Stitch in play, you get to actually play the big stitch on turn 4 on top of the small stitch and then you can get the engine rolling so how do we make this deck consistent? well we want to play as many 1 drops and, uh, and 2 drops as possible now because we only have very limited spoilers so far of Lorcana you'll notice two things one uh, we'll be playing with 40 cards deck in order to keep this, this strategy consistent and highlight the power of cards because if we start playing 60 cards deck as is intended, then we will have to dilute our card pool playing whatever's available. So th this is why I'm limiting the decks to 40 cards. Also, you'll note that cards are proxies at this point uh, because real cards release in four months. So we do not have access to them, but I'm just too eager to actually show some gameplay videos. Also, please do support the real cards once they come out. I certainly intend to do so. So back to the deck list. We want to play as many 1-drops as possible. So we're playing Maleficent, the 2-questing 1-drop, Pascal, the 1-drop that essentially has evasion, as long as you have another, uh, another character in play, which this deck is likely to have. Hey Hey, which is 1-2, quests 1, also has a combat ability that's not overly relevant for this deck. Olaf, 1-drop. Isma is actually an interesting one. So this one's a 2-drop, and it whenever it quests, it allows you to look at the top card of your, uh, of your deck and either put it to the bottom or leave it there. This is very useful to search for a stitch, allowing you to dig one card deep to try and find it, either the baby stitch or the big stitch. Furthermore, as you get deeper in the game you, and you start comboing off with the Rockstar st stitch, you actually get to scout the next card of your deck, ensuring that it's a 1 or 2 draw that you're going to be able to play with whatever ink you have left. So Isma, very good 2 drop in this deck. Then we're playing Mini, LeFou, as other 2 drops, simply because that's what we have available. Which leaves the only non-stitch, non 1-2 non drop in the deck to be Hades. And the reason Hades is there is, well, I was running out of 1 drops and 2 drops, and also it it's a very strong card on its own and it can bring back a one drop so for five mana play Hades fetch a Maleficent play back the Maleficent keep on the stitch engine going so even though it's a four drop it allows us to fetch a one or two drop fairly easily also allows us to refetch a stitch if one happens to to be banished and that's the deck list so let's see this deck in action with some games all right, let's draw those opening hands. Let's see what we have. I'll actually show my hand here, just so we can figure out the mulligan strategy. So in this deck, we're really trying to hit that stitch. So this is a very simple mulligan. Send everything into the deck. So mulliganing seven. Let's see if we can get more luck on our next round of seven. These all get shuffled in. Keeping the suspense as we're going to draw a new hand. 
In the meantime, let's see if our opponent's keeping. Mo opponent decides to keep their hand as is. No need for a mulligan when you have the perfect hand. Let's see what we've hit. When it seems like we've hit, well, we've hit the big stitch, but we are missing a little stitch. All right. Well, let's get the game started by rolling to see who goes first. Two for me. And five for a lovely opponent, which means you get to go first. Our opponent inks an, an Aladdin. And uses it to develop her brain. Let's see what she can what our opponent can get out of that. Actually we won't see because the cards are hidden from us. But let's guess. Blue cards? Red cards? Something like that. All right, and the turn shifts back to us, and we draw an Isma. We'll gladly add that to our hand, so we want to keep that stitch at all costs. Our opponent has no pressure, so we want to play our Maleficent. So let's play an Ehe in our ink pool and tap it for Maleficent, and I'll pass the turn. This time it's a Robin Hood going into the ink pool. As our opponent plays Donald Duck, the bane of our Maleficent. And the turn shifts back to us. And we hit a Minnie Mouse. A pretty good draw, although we are hoping to hit a one costed stitch here. But we're not hitting it, and we won't hit it in time. Maybe we still want to dig with it for it with Isma, or maybe we just want a mini. Well, let's uh, quest with Maleficent for two. And play, actually we need to ink something. Let's ink a mini, play a mini, and pass the turn. Unfortunately, we've left our Maleficent now open to a challenge as our opponent is unallowed to quest Mickey because of the lack of the Fleur symbol, which is a good reminder that we need to be careful in our deck building strategies to make sure we have enough cards to ink. Aladdin is going to hit the ink bin which is really its purpose at this point in the game. It's ink until you have enough, and then it's a massive threat. All right, our opponent plays the Mickey Mouse, Ramper of Ink, taking the top card of her deck, putting it in her ink pool. I think it comes in exerted. You'll allow me to read. Yes, face down and exerted. All right, and Donald Duck challenges Maleficent, who's going <coughs> to hit the bin, dealing one point of damage to our good old friend, the duck. And then we get the turn back. We draw, oh, we draw the stitch just on time. So that was the perfect draw. Since we're planning on dropping Stitch on turn 4, actually we get to double draw it. Uh, it's tempting to play Isma and Stitch, or we can ink Isma and then just play a flurry of one drops next turn with Stitch. But actually it would be the turn afterwards, because next turn we're just 
playing Stitch. So let's ink our Olaf and double play Isma and Stitch for one and two respectively and Donald is a threat because he it keeps on taking out our attackers so I mean he's gonna cha channel challenge Donald removing it from play banishing it to the graveyard who's not actually called graveyard in this game and I will pass the turn our opponent is now on four ink to our three I sense some big threats about to come out as develop your brain hits the ink bin ink pool Although I don't think I'd want to swim in an ink pool and here comes a five drop and it's Aurora <coughs> Aurora's a pretty big threat then will our opponent challenge mini and take her out of play or quest for one that's the quest All right, opponent goes up to one and turn passes back to us First, we unexert everything, then we draw. Draw Minnie Mouse. Minnie's going to go straight into the ink pool as we will shift our stitch into Mega Stitch or Stitch Rockstar. Um, at this point, I guess we just send them in. Quest for two. And Isma <coughs> triggers at this point. Isma says, whenever this character quests, look at the top card of your deck, put it at the top or the bottom. Our top card is an Olaf. And Olaf can stay there. That's fine. And we'll end our turn. Turn passes back to our opponent. And what's waiting for us this time? Sitting only with two cards left in hand, Pascal and the Hey Hey. But that's exactly what we're looking for with Stitch on the board. We're gonna start Yeah, uh, we're we're gonna start using that combo, the one card combo. Stitch and one drops. That Mickey cannot go in the ink pool because it doesn't have the uh cert the circle around the the converted ink cost. Which I guess is not converted, it's just the ink cost. All right. Opponent is now at six inks. And there's a second Aurora hitting play. <coughs> and now, do our threats live? Or is our opponent going to try and race us? They both go to quest, so that's three lore, bringing our opponent up to four. And a turn back to us as we unexert everything and draw our card, which is Olaf, of course. We, we saw that one from the top of our deck. And now the fun begins. We're gonna go hey hey. Draw a card, which is another hey hey. Hey, look at that. We're gonna hey hey. Draw a card. We're gonna Pascal. Drawing another card. Maleficent. I like it. Maleficent. Since we're just going to spam things, one more for Maleficent. Draw a card. It's Mini. Mini is the perfect card to throw into our inkwell using her to play another Pascal. Drawing a card off of Stitch, which is another Stitch, and we're running out of space here. Which is why I'm calling this Stitch Combo, because once Stitch starts rolling, it's rock and roll. 
All right, and at this point, we'll just quest with both Mini and Isma, bringing our lore total to six. And we'll get to look at our top card, which is a stitch. We do not want stitch. So that'll go to the bottom, and I'll pass the turn. I prefer not to put Stitch vul vulnerable, even though questing with it would be worth three lore. I don't think it's worth it. Stitch will win the game on its own by just casting a ton of cards. Our opponent inks a Donald. And now plays a Donald. There's five inks remaining. We'll bring another Mickey Mouse. Somewhat unfortunate draws for opponent who's really looking for uh, high costed cards at this point. But there's still the two Auroras, which will likely clean my side of the, of the field or try to race our lore. Questing for five, so I guess it's a race. Back to us, unexert everything, draw a card, Hades. Hades is interesting if we run out of gas, can pick up Maleficent and play her. Uh, we'll begin by questing Minion Isma bringing us to eight, activating the Isma ability, looking at the top card, which is LeFou. LeFou is fine. Um, we'll quest for one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, bringing us to 14. And then we still get to play cards. Stitch, draw a card off of Stitch. Olaf, draw a card off of Stitch. Stitch goes in the ink pool. We don't need the second one, which means we'll play LaFou. Stitch triggers, draw one more for another LaFou. And this is just how degenerate Stitch gets when he gets on his rock and roll stance. And then we'll pass the turn to our opponent, who we're very thankful is still playing the game with us, as honestly, this side of the board is quite disgusting. I prefer to call it fun. You get the pick. This is where the importance of five costed removal spells comes in. Opponent finds a third copy of Aurora. We really have an Aurora Borealis going on on that side of the board. An opponent is going to mana request for seven going up to 16, which will end her turn. Turn passes back to us, <coughs> unexerting everything. And then we need to let Stitch finish, finish it off. So two, four, five, and Stitch wins the game. And that's game one. All right, let's go with game number two. Since we won the last game, we're going to give the opportunity to our opponent to decide whether they want to go first or not. And it looks like they want to start. So let's see what we have. We have four baby stitches, two LeFous, and Betty Stitch. So we're going to keep Stitch Rockstar Small stitches are good. 
can keep two of them. I'm not sure we want to alter anything. We get, uh, well, maybe we can try to hit the Maleficent. That could help us go a little faster. So I'm going to send a Stitch and a LeFou back. And we'll get Hades and Mini. All right. That is a slight improvement. Kind of what we were looking for. All right. And we'll let our opponent go first. No draw on the first turn. Opponent inks a goofy. And that's it. Turn passes back. We draw a Pascal. That was a good one drop. We don't need that many stitches. Uh, actually, yeah, let's just ink a, a stitch. Bring out a Pascal and pass the turn. Our opponent inks a big Maleficent. And plays Donald, the bane of our deck. Turn passes, we draw a card, it's a mini. Mini will go into our ink pool. Although, yeah, let's ink mini. Let's play a mini. And let's quest with Pascal. Now, since Pascal has camouflage, and we have another character in play, means that it has evasive, so Donald will not be able to challenge it, but will as will pass the turn back. So our Pascal is safe. And so is Mini for the time being. It's a lot less aggressive of a start without the Maleficent. Opponent inks to Donald. Pays three ink for Mickey Mouse. Putting the top card hover library into her ink pool. Exerted. And Donald Duck will have to quest, I guess. A one to one the quest score. This turn passes back to us and now we're feeling slightly behind to the ramp. As we draw Hey Hey. This point, I think we want to go for stats. Yeah, let's ink an a, a Hey Hey. And we'll bring out Stitch and LeFou. Pascal and Mil Miniwell Quest, bringing us to three. And we'll pass the turn. Our opponent's already ready to start playing some five drops. Which can be scary at this stage in the game. But thankfully we're gonna get to shift our stitch next turn. Opponent inks and Maleficent. And Aurora comes out to play again. I suspect our mini's gonna hit the bin this turn if Donald and Mickey want to challenge her. The other option is to just start questing ahead. Alright. So Minnie goes down, but not without a fight. She gets to deal two points of damage to both of these characters. And the turn will pass back to us. 
We draw. Big stitch. Into the ink pool. And we're going to shift big stitch. Well now, questing LeFou is interesting. Might force Aurora. Yeah, let's quest with LeFou and quest with Pascal. Questing for three. Bringing us to six. And we'll pass a turn. I thought that keeping the dices off of ones wouldn't bug me, but it bugs me. <laughs> we can actually see the numbers fairly well from the camera angle. But just so it's clear, I'll still put one dice per damage counter. Opponent plays a Mickey for three, inking the top card of her library. So you still have two more inks available. I'm not sure if that's relevant. And now, opponent is likely to quest with everything or challenge LeFou with Aurora. LeFou's probably worth taking off of the board due to his quest 2 ability. Also, he wouldn't do that much damage to Aurora. Opponent quests for 2. Now, Aurora, what do you do? Challenge request. Aurora challenges LeFou. It goes down. Running away. Because that's pretty much what he does on the card. Running away back <coughs> to Gusto. As the turn shifts back to us. For the madness to begin. As we draw a big stitch. Which we will throw directly into our ink bin. And then... Stitch for one, draw a card. Isma for two, draw a card. LeFou for two, draw a card. Don't you just love Stitch Rockstar? I'm talking to the viewers. I know you don't. And then we are going to quest for one. Not, o not an overly impressive quest, but a quest nonetheless. As we'll pass the turn. Opponent unexerts everything with six inks in the pool score standing at seven to three in favor of stitch madness and here comes Mulan oh that's threatening because if Mulan challenges and defeats one of our character all of our Hudder characters are going to be able to quest for an extra point of lore. And with four characters in play, that's an extra four lore. We can get raced away at this point. So we might need to challenge some of our characters. Now our opponent has nothing to challenge, so I guess it's going to be a massive quest. Opponent quests for five. Taking the lead, eight to seven, as the turn passes back to us. Five inks in our ink pool, we draw for turn. Draw <coughs> Pascal, which is kind of what we want. Now we should count. Can our opponent actually finish the game? Or should we actually challenge some of these characters? That is the question. I think we need to, because Mulan just provides too much value. I can't allow Mickey and Donald to start questing for two. That's too much. So let's try to keep our cards alive if we can. Maybe we just clean a house. So, um, and we also need to be mindful of Isma's ability. When do we want to look at the top card of our deck? Since we do have two one drops right now, I'm not as worried about it. So I'll just start playing them. Pascal for one. Draw. Olaf for one. Draw a card. 
Minis, okay, but we'll go Olaf. Olaf for one. Draw a card. <clears throat> now we've hit Hades. So at this point, I would like something to ink. So I'm going to activate Isma now. Isma is going to go after Mickey here. Isma takes one. Mickey takes two. And oh no, actually it's only when he quests. All right, well doesn't matter anyways. We're going to use LeFou to challenge this Mickey, who's going to hit the bin. Dealing one point of damage to LeFou. We are going to attack, challenge this Mickey with Stitch, bringing it to the bin, taking some damage on Stitch, and Pascal will trade with Donald, both hitting the bin. And then we'll play Mini for two, and we draw a card which is Pascal, and we'll ink Pascal. That's where our turn six. And that is it for our turn, so we're not questing this turn, just doing a bit of cleanup. And we'll pass our opponent. We're hoping to challenge our opponent's big cards by making use of all of our small creatures, but a flood of them. I mean characters. I mean, Minnie's not a creature, it's a character. And a princess of that. Nice synergies with princesses going on with Moana, which we will have to play. So many fun cards to play and I just can't wait for them to reveal more cards. This is going to make for an interesting roller coaster of deck lists with decks that keep on getting improved as new cards get released. Our opponent plays Maleficent. For four, I expect Mulan will challenge probably LeFou. Those two lower char characters just are, are so much more powerful. Mulan doesn't need challenge LeFou, who will deal one point of damage to Mulan. Mulan's ability triggers and all of her characters will quest for one extra lore. So questing for three. This is quite a different game where we're now behind on lore and our opponent has a lot of lore power in play. Turn passes back to us. So we unexert everything. Draw for the turn. A Maleficent. All right. So our opponent can quest for three, six, seven next turn, and we can quest for two, four, five, six. This turn. Plus, it depends on the draws. Um, yeah, I do want to make sure I draw another one drop or two drops. So I'm going to quest with Isma. And there's an Isma on top. I do like Isma's. But I'm going to send it to the bottom, hoping for a one drop. Can I challenge Mulan? If I challenge Mulan, it's going to be quite expensive. Same with Aurora. Do we just race here? I think we just race. One, two. So let's quest for five. One, two, three, four, five. Bringing us to 14. Then we go Maleficent. Draw by Stitch. Olaf. Draw for Stitch. Weiwei. Draw for Stitch. Isma, draw for Stitch. And then we are stuck with LeFou. So I might as well ink LeFou. And since we're going to end the game on the next turn, we might as well send Stitch on a quest. 
bringing us to 17. Hopefully this will be the inevitable downfall of our opponent as we pass the turn back. Opponent inks card. Robin, Robin Hood comes into play. And I'm starting to think that the sti stitch engine might be a little too strong for this level of play at this point. Or, or it's probably just that it deserves a removal spell. Because if the deck is filled with one drops and two drops, and Stitch gets removed, or if you have to actually play Stitch on turn 6, then it becomes a, less, a lot less powerful, and there's more time for these 5 drops and 6 drops to actually catch up on the board state. So I guess at this point, opponent quests for 5. And that will be the end of the game. Turn passes back to us. We draw, we quest, and that is game. Great game too with a lot more combat happening this time, but the Stitch, stitch Engine is just, it, it really needs an answer. Otherwise it, it will take over the game. I hope that you've enjoyed the games of Stitch Turbo. Uh, I do realize now that I forgot to actually exert the characters as I was playing them and using Stitch's ability to draw. But in hindsight, it would not have mattered very much to the outcome of the games. And the combo is just about flooding the board as we've seen in game one and game two. Stitch on turn four is devastating and needs a removal spell to answer it, especially since it cannot be challenged while it is uh, re in a ready state. So with that said, I hope that you've enjoyed the games. And if you did, there, there's going to be other videos showing some gameplay of Lorcana cards, especially as new spoilers get re released, but also from the existing card pool. So if you've enjoyed this video, video, please drop a like, drop a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Again, I hope you've enjoyed, and see you next time.